introversion and autism. What could they possibly have to do with Final Fantasy XIV? For me, actually a lot. Bear with me, I'll explain. But first, I have to be clear. I'm not a professional in ASD or mental health. I'm just a person talking about my experiences with it and how it relates to a personality construct. Introversion. And the video game that provided me a place to start to discover that relationship. Okay, let's talk terminology. So everybody's on the same page. Autism, now known as ASD or Autism Spectrum Disorder, is a neurological condition that affects how people with it learn, how we behave around other people, and how we communicate. It's most often characterized as a spectrum or cluster due to the statistical relationship and clustering of physical and developmental characteristics of people with autism. For example, anxiety disorders affect up to 42% of people with autism, as opposed to only affecting an estimated 15% of adults in the general population. Introversion was coined by Jung in the early 1900s to help us define personality types. People who turn inward as opposed to outward for energy. It's evolved since then clinically, but is still most often used in everyday life to present the dichotomy between quiet, pensive people and their bold, talkative counterparts. Around the same time as Jung was defining introversion, a Soviet psychiatrist, Gronya Ifmovna Sukherva, wrote the first paper describing six patients we now recognize as having ASD. In spite of that, most of our current understanding of ASD stems from the research of Leo Kanner and his study in 1943. He was also the first American psychiatrist to consider children who were patients as full human beings, and the first to say their treatment inside of institutions was worth consideration. So obviously, We've come a long way since then. And both of these terms have changed a lot over time. And so has Final Fantasy XIV for that matter. Back when I played in 2.0, it was a very different game. The major difference I'm referencing is the lack of systems to assist you through the game if you don't have people to play with. I referenced that in my last video, which is what got me thinking about this topic. So when I talk about Final Fantasy XIV, I'm talking about the game back in 2013, 2016-ish and how that version of the game helped me figure out for myself what these terms meant for me. When I picked up A Realm Reborn, I wasn't looking for friends or social interaction. I was looking to experience a good story, take on the challenge of an MMO, and kill time. But playing Final Fantasy XIV, I learned more about myself than I did in the 20 years prior, fundamentally changing who I am and how I carry myself in the world. By providing my younger self with a low stakes opportunity to make friends and interact with people, with most of the non-verbal communication mitigated by virtue of how the game works, I thrived. It wasn't the first time I found a group of friends that I could let my guard down around, but it was the first time since everybody that made up my little community that I mentioned in my last video. All went our separate ways following high school. Speaking of the last video, in it, I said I was an introvert for brevity, but also because it conveyed most of what I wanted to say. But introversion, like any of the other big five personality traits that psychologists use today to describe the never-ending plethora of human beings, is far from a simple term. What makes it harder still is my relationship with that word. Introvert is a good shorthand for autistic. When you want to explain your behavior, but you don't want to potentially make people uncomfortable, especially when being able to read people is something you have to work at, or if you're a parent trying to find words to describe why your child is different from their peers to other parents. For some of us growing up in the 90s with autism, that was all parents thought they needed. Some careful words, a little extra work to socialize the kid, and they didn't have to address the diagnosis. Here's where it gets more interesting for me though. Our more modern understanding of ASD and introversion, and this more open dialogue in society about mental health generally that can lead us to new conceptualizations of these constructs. One, a disorder, and the other one of the five most statistically discernible qualities in personality. In her 2010 master's thesis, Jennifer Grimes posited that they may exist on the same spectrum. So now, 100 years after Jung coined these terms, and our first articles about people with autism, we're beginning to have the conversation about how they relate to one another. Being someone with ASD, who spent my whole life being told I'm an introvert, this gives me plenty of reason to want to participate in the conversation in my own small way. Introverts are supposed to be quiet. Well, that part of the definition was a hang up for me as a kid. Everyone said introverts are quiet, even the dictionary. 
People call me introverted to explain my odd behavior or why I don't act like other kids. But I'm way too loud around the people I trust, and I will get told to be quieter every single day. My experiences with Final Fantasy XIV forced me to grapple with questions about myself. If I'd ever been introverted, how much of that was my autism? If my parents used a shorthand to protect me from being branded with a stereotype of movies like Rain Man, and before anyone thinks anything bad about my parents, they did an amazing job. And any neurotypical parents facing the challenges of raising a child on the spectrum and everything that comes along with that, I believe deserve respect, as long as they're trying to do the best by their child. Okay, back to my experiences with FF14. I go more into depth in our last video, but I'll catch you up. When I joined FF, I ended up in a small guild with a leader who quit the game, and through a bit of hard work, we built an amazing free company and group of friends. And when the time came for the patch that would finally let somebody take over, all my peers voted me to be the leader. A mostly symbolic gesture, but an important moment for me nonetheless. After leaving FF, I've been promoted into leadership roles in my professional life over and over. Something FF taught me I was capable of, in spite of my challenges reading people. Growing up in my small town, I learned not to be strange or different. By high school, I had learned that it was okay to be different as long as I thought I could trust the people around me. Most of the time I was right. By the time I'd been playing FF for a year, I had learned that as long as I knew the unspoken rules, I could thrive. Even better yet, in Final Fantasy, I could politely ask one of my peers to help me understand. I would almost never be shamed for my ignorance of appropriate behavior, and on the rare occasion someone would say something negative to somebody asking for help, the community would call them out for being unwelcoming. After three years with FF, I learned a lot about my limitations and started to remove self-inflicted ceilings from my development as a person. Spending hours in PF, attempting stressful challenges with groups of strangers, undertaking seemingly overwhelming challenges of persistence with my friends. The beauty of my time in FF wasn't the parts that were easy. It was the parts that were hard for me, like mediating conflicts inside of our group, something that I was initially terrified about, but something I've had to do countless times in my professional life since. A strength I learned I had thanks to an MMO that led me to finding those parts of myself. Now, 10 years after I picked up FF, I know that a lot of the things I learned in Eorzea are actually true almost everywhere you will go. What do I mean? Once upon a time, I made a friend in game, and over the course of a few months, we became very close. Eventually, they invited me to come meet up Iro. To go by myself to another country, something at this point I had never considered. The idea of going through a major airport was something I found beyond overwhelming. But I did it anyways. I had an amazing time. Something I never would have thought myself capable of. Since then, I've traveled across the Atlantic. I've spent months at a time in foreign countries where I don't speak the language. For some of you, that might not seem like a lot. But for me, it's kind of everything. Proof to myself of my growth. But how much of what I thought was introversion was just me protecting myself from engaging with the challenges of my condition. I still avoid crowded places if I can, but they don't intimidate me like they once did. I don't always know what people are communicating non-verbally, but I'm way better at it. Everyone with ASD has different challenges, but I wanted to share some of mine and what worked for me. Do introversion and autism exist on the same spectrum? And how do they relate to one another? Hard to say dealing in terms that are evolving as quickly as they are. But Jennifer's thesis I found compelling, and I'm glad the discussion has started. There'll be a link in the description. I don't think I'm alone in my experiences in FF, and now that we have all started having these important conversations, I wanted to do my part to talk about how an MMO helped me finish learning the skills I needed to go out in the world and thrive in spite of my challenges. And I hope that maybe if I talked about it, someone else might see it for the opportunity that it is a great place to learn skills and things about yourself. As someone with ASD, something I've learned ever since looking into it is that there are things I can learn and that learning these skills can help remove limitations from my life. An interesting part about Jennifer's thesis to me is that our understanding of introversion may be clouded by a constellation of undiagnosed non-clinical autism and social anxieties. For me, at least, that seems to have been the case. Have I become less introverted? No, but I have shed a lot of the negative traits we use to describe introverts along the way. If maybe 
some of what we now believe is intrinsic to people isn't actually and through hard work and self-development could be uncovered from a shell of social anxieties or overcome by learning skills to help formerly undiagnosed struggles in nonverbal communication, I think that could be a great thing. And if other people found this game or something like it to unearth these parts of themselves, that could be amazing because it was for me. And I'm sure it will be for other people, even if they don't recognize it at the time, like I didn't.